transcend. It means a huge amount. I think that this has to be realized. You know, it's not just the mines themselves that have lost revenue, the revenue they would have earned from taking the platinum out and selling it. Uh, it's not just the mine workers who have lost an income. And we've got to remember the no work, no pay has hit them very, very hard themselves, their families, all of the surrounding areas. We've got to remember all the suppliers of goods and services to the mines. And this is a huge infrastructure. So it's not just the, the, the mining sector. It stretches, ripples through to a far greater extent. And yes, it's going to have a significant impact on the broader economy in that case. Yeah, well, we just heard in the press conference uh, one of the speakers saying that uh, there are no winners in this yes. strike. Who has won between the mines and the workers? Well, no winners is probably correct. The, the, you can't recreate that amount of revenue that was lost. They can't just go and say, well, we can turn the clock back. That can't be done. Um, I think that perhaps South Africa will emerge as a winner. What we have discovered is that there has to be a greater discourse between mine management and the miners themselves. There has to be some sort of rapprochement to say, look, uh, we can't just drift further and further apart. We can't have uh, the chief executive earning a hundred times what the mine worker himself is earning. There's got to be something learned from that. And I think that's where we may be better off in, uh, in human relationships in, in the future. Let's look at the movement of the rent ever since the yes. strike started on the 23rd of January. Its volatility, how would you gauge it? Uh, more so that the platinum price, the share price of platinum at the GSE as well, has it been uh, moving in confusion in as far as the <laughs> graphs are concerned? That's an excellent uh, description, moving in confusion. Yes, the volatility, the rate at which it has gone up and down uh, on the share prices themselves. But what has been interesting is they haven't taken a big knock as it ha as may have been thought they would do because mine management planned very well for this. They had several months of, uh, of stock waiting out of the mine already, already processed, waiting to be delivered to the markets. So that was very good planning on their behalf. I think they must have worked through most of that, if not all of that already. But nevertheless, there hasn't been the sort of deficit that would have cost a huge shortage in the platinum mining sector and driven the price much higher. Let, let's talk from a shareholder's perspective. I yes. believe that there are those who trade for themselves and those who have portfolio managers and all that. What happens in the technical aspect of trading the shares at the JSC in as far as selling, holding or buying? Well, I think now, uh, Whatever the news is, it's very interesting. The, it's always discounted in advance. So I think that uh, a positive resolution was expected. It had to happen at some stage, uh, even though this is South Africa, South African labor relations, since had to prevail and finally has. So therefore, I think we, maybe we'll see a little more stability in the share prices. And maybe with some of them, we'll see a little bit of an improvement in the shorter term, which would be welcome because it will enable them to be able to raise money to build their operations and to continue them in the, in the future. Now, how do we dust off our jackets moving forward in as far as the effect of the strike is concerned uh, on the economy? Uh, looking at the contractions that we've been having in various sectors, the CPIX, the Purchasing Managers Index by Cajiso, as well as uh, Consumer Confidence yes. and the, 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 the Producer Price Index as well. These, these factors have all taken a huge blow. Uh, you know, both the business sector and the consumer sector, confidence has been low. Spending, which may otherwise have been done, has been delayed. So that has, has meant that the amount of economic activity, the total amount of business that was done, should have been done in the economy has been delayed. And this has caused a severe slowdown. The mining sector itself uh, contributes about 5% to the country's GDP. That's the gross domestic product, the total value of all goods and services produced in one period. Um, so it's not a huge amount, but it's the tipping impact. And as I said, it's not just the mining sector, it's all those that ripple through into it. So I think what we may see now is that in the first quarter, we actually had a contraction. The economy as a whole was smaller than it was the previous quarter. Now, we may just see that in the second quarter, strike has continued, second quarter goes on until a week ahead only. Uh, so we could see another 
contraction. But I think perhaps looking in the second half of the year, there may be a recovery. But Colin, what is very important, it's just not the mining sector where there are these uh, uh, fragile labor relationships. It's the industrial uh, manufacturing sector whose three-year uh, wage agreement is coming up for negotiating now. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the workers have promised it's going to be tough. It will be tough. And then what will happen mm -hmm. is we could get a large part of that sector closing down, and that sector is 15% of the economy. So I think we're in for a very difficult second half of the year as well. But now looking at uh, international perception, yes. more so that uh, loan min implants and implants had declared a force majeure. Yes. So now what happens in as far as the international investor is concerned uh, regarding the business confidence? Business confidence is likely to remain low. And this is something we as South Africans have to realize. We shoot ourselves in the foot. You know, we say, oh, we need foreign investors. Let's build up the confidence. We don't have a confidence in ourselves. What we're finding is that foreign investors are saying, look, we're not even sure of the security of our own assets here. And this is a factor, particularly in the mining and mineral sector. Um, you have an unstable labor supply. You have an unreliable electricity supplier. We're not necessarily, we're probably not going to advance any of our capital to your new industries and developments. This is where the longer term. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking comes. you this question is uh, perhaps an international yes. investor is looking at where to invest globally. And uh, South Africa has just uh, been downgraded by yes. uh, Fitch. And of course, we are on the triple B status. Are we likely to head up for junk? We're, we're only one notch away. You know, what they said is that triple B, triple B minus with negative bias. That means they would expect the next move to be a d further downgrading. If that happens, it'll be even more difficult for South Africa to access foreign capital because the asset managers of this world say, I'm sorry, if you're at that status, we are not allowed by our own rules to invest in, in your securities. That is where we have to be terribly careful that we do something to try and engender a build-up of confidence again. We cannot afford these long labor strikes as we have had. Now, where does this put the Reserve Bank's monetary policy? Are they going to be in tenterhooks in as far as leaving interest rates unchanged or they have to perhaps increase moderately through the prudent uh, policies that they have in place uh, to just keep them at a point two five basis points? It, it's a very fine balance. They have to balance their prime uh, responsibility to keep inflation within that 3 to 6% band, and it's well over 6, 6.6% .6 at the moment. So we're out of bounds there already. In addition to that, they have to look after the stability of the currency, um, and they have to take into account the state of the economy. If they raised interest rates, what would it do? It would mean even less economic activity. That would be very bad. So they may just try to look through this present hump in the inflation rate, they may say, well, let's see if the RAND does improve a little bit. And it has come quite a lot stronger than it was at its mm -hmm. weakest point, And therefore, they may delay a decision. I think in any case, you just mentioned something quite likely. If they make a move, it could well just be a 25 basis point, a quarter percent, rather than, than the normal 50 basis point, which they have used in the past. So but they will be reluctant to do that while the economy is in such a, a delicately balanced uh, state right now. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how do you think platinum is going to perform in the markets now? Because investors are breathing a sigh of relief yes. that, oh, finally, the strike is over. The workers are going back to work tomorrow. So what's going to happen? How do you think the market activity is going to be like tomorrow? Or more so that we are having closing time at the GSE yes. right now, uh, from now until the next 24 hours? Well, let's first of all take the platinum price itself, the price of the metal in world precious metal markets. That's likely to come down a bit. Because all of a sudden, uh, there's going to be an ability to supply more on a regular basis. And uh, if those su new supplies start coming through, inventory start getting built up again, there's no scarcity demand as there may have been. So that is one point, of course, and that doesn't suit the mines necessarily. So they will probably feed in quite gradually. As far as the mining companies are concerned, uh, I think that uh, those that were most short of capital will say, look, we are now going to resume operations. We are going to resume revenue uh, build up again. And therefore, we're in a better case to justify having higher share prices. The share prices haven't been knocked back as much as one may have expected. They have come back to some extent. And I'd say a slow build up is mm -hmm. a likelihood in the next few months ahead.
Well, thank you so much thank for you. your analytical perspective. Surely right. we hope to see you soon. Good. I hope that we don't have a long strike very soon. We must, yes. Yeah. Well, Chief Economist at the South African Institute for Race Relations, that Ian Krushangs, talking to us right here on PM News. It's always a pleasure doing business with you. Let's take